I just finished creating an audio and video recording app for macOS. I wrote the app in SwiftUI and AppKit. It just went live this morning. It's pretty easy to create apps like this using Apple's out-of-the-box APIs. You actually get what you pay for with that developer membership fee in this case. However, there are some points of contention, some, some little details you want to pay attention to in order to get an app like this out the door with all its uh, loose ends tied. So the first thing I wanted to go over was system preferred camera. This is an API that was introduced with continuity camera in the latest Mac OS. And this makes sure that you're using the camera that the user prefers. So if they chose their iPhone as the camera, using this API makes sure that you remember that preference. And here on Apple's documentation, it says it considers the value of user preferred camera as well as other factors like camera suspension and the appearance of continuity cameras blah 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 so in other words if you use this api make sure that that you're using the right camera man so um i went ahead and adopted it so that when the when the app fires up it auto selects the camera that the user prefers and it's just a nice detail you want to add and to support it you got to listen to the property using key value observations which is an api that's been in apple code forever man so I don't know, what caught me up a little bit is observing a static property wasn't exactly intuitive to me. So what you gotta do is you gotta do avcapture.self.addobserver and then you mo uh, monitor the new and initial. And then I got my observer handler down here and it sets a property which in turn has a will set and did set. So suffice it to say, when user preferred camera changes, I update the list of available cameras and their associated formats. And along the same lines is observing the discovery session. So for both video and audio, I create AV discovery sessions in my sources class, which is a singleton. So I have a video discovery session here and an audio discovery session here. And then I observe the, the devices property of those two discovery sessions in order to keep my list of audio and video devices up to date just in case one disconnects or another one's added. While the app is running, it will automatically update the list of devices without the user having to restart the app. So you might be asking yourself, what is the difference between that and the uh, system preferred camera API? And the only difference really is the system preferred camera keeps track of supposedly what the user prefers as their preferred device. So instead of having to code up your own solution for keeping track of the system preferred or the user's preferred device, you can use that. So another thing I wanted to go over and perhaps it's something you're wondering about is the process of displaying a video feed in SwiftUI. While SwiftUI doesn't give you a native SwiftUI control for displaying video, it's pretty easy to achieve using a combination of NSView and NSView representable and um, using the AV capture video preview layer. So Apple gives you this nice out of the box way of displaying a video feed. It works for like 99% of use cases. And to, to display it in, in SwiftUI, you just subclass NSView and set the, that views layer. You set that views layer to um, the AV capture video preview layer. And then using NSV representable, you can display that in SwiftUI. It's very straightforward. It's this much code, no problem. And also what's pretty cool is that any, any video app you create using um, Apple's APIs is gonna have automatic, it's gonna automatically take advantage of the new continuity camera stuff. And you can access that through Control Center, go up here if you have any videos video feed running you'll automatically get this this thing right here and you can choose whether or not to use portrait studio lighting center stage you know all that stuff you get all that stuff for free for the most part it's pretty nice <laughs> another big thing you want to think about is error handling you want to ask for permission properly. You want to ask the user for permission to use the camera, to use the video. And getting that right can be a little testy, but there's a way you can test it using TCC util. I don't know if you knew about this, but you can actually use TCC util, man. TCC util, have you heard of it? Using TCC util, you can reset the user's uh, privacy decisions so that you can test the process of the user accepting them or denying them and making sure that your app has a correct user experience for both scenarios. There's, a, there's several scenarios you gotta think about, makes your eyes roll, but 
Obviously, you got to think about the scenario of the user denying video access to your app, even though it is a video app, you want to respond gracefully to it. Obviously, that's a fatal error. You're going to want to show an error that says, oh, we need permission to use the camera. Please give us permission, blah, blah, blah. We can't. But the app actually can function without audio. So then I had to think about how do you make that experience actually work and my app just displays an error that you can close. Anyway, the way of testing this stuff is to use TCC util and you can test it repeatedly. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is uh, the app sandbox stuff, which is what got me rejected one time. Mac apps are actually pretty, pretty testy about what they um, allow in terms of saving files to people's computers. They want to make sure that the user actively chooses where your app saves its files. So at some point in my app, at some point before I save the recording to the device, I prompt the user for the folder that they want to save their stuff into which is easy enough. You just give them a folder picker. There's native APIs for that. NS open panel. You just give them an NS open panel with a confirmation button that says choose output folder, which is what I do. But the one detail that might catch you up and it's a nice thing to have is you don't want to ask them every single time they make a recording to choose their output folder. You want to remember it. You want to use your head and remember it. I mean, don't be stupid, app. Remember what I said last time. And this is actually not straightforward because of Apple's um, security measures, their sandbox stuff. So I had to do some sleuthing. I found a nice little post on Stack Overflow that goes over how to achieve this. And you can find that post here. But what you do when the user chooses is a folder you have to save this thing called a bookmark I don't understand it in detail but this code I found works but basically you got to sit you got to serialize this bookmark to disk and then the next time the app loads you got to load this thing from disk so that the folder that the user chose and it won't be necessary to prompt them every time so check out that post for achieving that those are the main sticking points that I ran into, the stuff that kind of stood out as things you want to pay attention to when creating a video app. For either Mac or, or iOS, it pretty much applies to both of them because the AV, AV Foundation APIs are almost identical for both platforms with some minor differences. So that's about all I got for this video. Thanks for watching the video. Thanks for watching. I'll piss it. Bye-bye.